Hello, welcome to Mel Made. My name is Mel and this is a podcast about all the things that I have made. And when I say made, I mean what I've knitted because I am a garment knitter. I'm a bit obsessed with knitting. I absolutely love it. And this is where I chat about that. You can find me on Instagram as Mel Made at MelliArt13 and also on Ravelry, which I think I'm just at MelliArt on Ravelry. Because I'm English, I'm going to have to tell you about the weather. I don't know why. I, I think <laughs> it really is a thing in this country. We can't start a conversation with someone uh, without discussing the weather. So um, I am based, by the way, in the northeast of England. I'm in County Durham. I'm quite high up. It's very, very beautiful. I'm not a native to County Durham, as you can tell by my voice. I'm um, originally from Berkshire. But not Wales. Someone said you sound Welsh. <laughs> Maybe I do sound Welsh. I don't know. But I definitely don't have a Geordie accent, which is sort of what's normal up here. Um, it's a really, really beautiful part of the country. And today it is sunny. It's got a lovely breeze. Because we're high up, we always have a breeze. It, it, I think it's a brilliant place to live for the summer weather because you get sunshine. It's ne very rarely, not never, it's very rarely absolutely roasting. And I'm not going to complain. We have had rain. It hasn't been really, really sunny month. July has been a really wet month, but I'm not going to complain because I know that Europe's sweltering. There's been like heat, dangerous heat waves, you know, I think in the US as well. So I'm not complaining. Oh, touch wood, we're doing OK. <laughs> there's, there's your weather update, sunny and breezy. So today I'm going to be talking about two finished objects that I've, I've recently completed. My ongoing whips my swips, my soon-to-be whips that I've got plans for and um, there'll be a little bit of like catch up at the end about um, mad things that went on on holiday. And so let's get started. What I'm wearing is what I'm going to start with. This is something that I can, I think this is about two years ago I finished this. This is a Marie Wallen pattern and I'm pretty sure it's called the Tatsu Top. I'll just show up see, I'll just stand up I mean so you can see. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. It's got the, well, I think of it as a little flower pattern, but it's called the quatrefoil, I think, lace pattern. And it's got dolman sleeves. It's knitted bottom up. And it's very simple. It's just two pieces and then it's seamed together. And uh, it, was, it was quite quick. It was easy. It needs blocking before you get the beauty of the lace, as, as, as often happens with lace. Um, it's knitted in Eden Cottage Yarns, I think it's Melbourne DK, which is a mixture of blue, blue faced Leicester and silk. And the colourway, I think, was called Bramble. I think you can still get it. And it's soft, it's smooth. It does. The only issue I've got with this, I think it's the partly the weight and partly the blue faced Leicester. This is a tiny bit warm for a summer's day, so it can prickle me here. But in the winter, it doesn't. So it's probably just, you know life telling me that actually it's a bit too warm to wear wool today and um, that can be a little bit prickly but in it's, it's a really good layering piece in the autumn and in the spring is probably more what I use it for but I thought I'd wear it today to show you so that's my tatsu top on to the finished objects the first finished object I've got to show you is my completed Lola pullover here it is Really, I'm really, really happy with this. I'm going to put a photograph in. I don't know whether to do that or that, but I'll put a photograph and it'll sort of go whichever way the iMovie Maker makes it go. And this is so soft. I have talked about this. I have rambled about this a lot, especially my previous episode. So I'll try and be a bit brief about it this time. So this is a pattern by Unit 2. And... I knitted this in Rowan Summerlight four ply, which is a cotton, like an Egyptian cotton four ply, uh, like a fingering weight, combined with, it's like a, a silk mohair, it's called Crea Deluxe. And that's, a, it was like a natural colour, so it was a bit creamy. So I had white and creamy and it, it, it's mixed to form this sort of, it's like white with a golden halo, <laughs> it's so pretty. I knitted this to go over my summer dresses and it, it does fit really well. The only issue I've got is slightly, slightly more fitted on the arms than I wanted. I wanted it a little bit more relaxed on the arms. And that is my fault, not the pattern's fault. It's because I went rogue. 
I talk about this a lot in my last episode, but I think I got it knitted top down like this and there's some really clever short row shaping at the back that ties in with the lace. It is a bit nail biting, but if you follow the pattern, you're absolutely fine and you whiz round. And then when I got to here, because of all my dimensions, I changed sizes, messed about, cast on extra. I started just got doing my own thing and I thought I was being really clever. <laughs> Some of it was clever because the body fits really well, but the arms, I think I started decreasing the arms far too early and I could have even let the art knitted the arms straight, but I was like decrease, decrease. And I just looked at what the decreases were and did them and didn't really pay much attention, didn't pay attention to the bottom. So yeah, anything I say about this, it, that is not the pattern's fault, that is just me. I just get excited and sort of run off and do things and sometimes that works me nicely and sometimes it bites you on the, the behind, which tiny bit, but I'm 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 not no, I'm not complaining. I, I absolutely love it. With what I've used to knit it with, what I would say is, I mean, we know this. Um well I sort of knew it, but I just didn't think about it. Cotton can grow. I mean, and um, we know that silk mohair has a, a lovely drape to it. I mean it's light, but it's it does this so both together they uh they really grew so my neckline which fitted perfectly when i first knitted it grew to the point where it was always off on the shoulder and that's not really the look i was going for especially not with the sleeves been a bit more fitted so i uh got my little white shearing elastic out and i threaded elastic through and tightened it and tightened it until I was happy and you can see it there you can see it pulling in but when it's on it, it, it doesn't notice and I probably I've even left the elastic I tucked it in but if you can see at the back I left it so now I can tighten it up if it all grows again um but yeah I would really recommend this pattern I just think it's so pretty and it was easier than I thought it would be from looking at the pattern so very very happy with that I just need it to get colder. I want to go. It's a bit too warm to wear this today. My second finished object is, and again, I will put a picture up, but I'm going to show you as well, my yoga wrap. This is it. It's a bit creased because it's just been bunched up in my wardrobe because I keep wearing it and then bundling it away, trying to tidy my room up. Um, there we go. I'll, oh, I'll put a picture in. This is so soft. <laughs> I, I love it when things are soft because uh, of my nightmare, ridiculous skin. Um, I haven't got any allergies, by the way. I'm just, I, I don't know. I'm just a pain. I'm just, everything tickles me and stuff. Oh. Ah, so very, very pink, but that is what I wanted. And it took me ages to find the right shade of pink. I wanted this sort of hot pink erring slightly on the blue side which is what this is, and it matches some shoes I've got, which I know is sad, but I love things that match sometimes. Uh, so, yes, I, I finished this on holiday. It was a perfect holiday knit. We went to Lanzarote uh, about a month ago now, and it was just, it was fun. It was bright um, because it's an Aran weight cotton. I could just, I don't know, it was, it felt quick. Um, you know, it was hard to do anything wrong with it, really. It's plain stockinette. It was knitted bottom up in pieces. So again, when I'm going around on hot trips on holiday, I'm not carrying the whole thing around. If you're knitting it in one piece, you know, it grows and it gets a bit big. So that wasn't an issue. And now I just wear this with summer dresses and it's quite cool. And um, I just really enjoyed it. I did have to make the strings. I don't know if you call the strings. I had to make them longer than the pattern did but I have was that my fault I might have done something mad with the pattern that means it's not the pattern's fault probably not the pattern's fault goodness knows oh yeah I added I made the bottom ribbing was supposed to be like two two rows of ribbing and I thought that wouldn't be enough I was worried it's going to curl so I did another two rows but then that affected how long this was so yeah it's probably not the pattern's fault but then once it was done and I thought well that needs long to be longer I just cast on where I picked up some stitches from the edge and just knitted um, again in rib, but that, you know, but then the ribs start going this way and just knitted it a bit longer on both sides and that worked out fine. And um, the reason I had increased the ribbing to four rows of ribbing instead of two, because here we're supposed to have two rows as well, was some of the reviews on Ravelry said that it was curling for them with two and some people said they tried it with four and it worked fine. So there was that as well. And 
apart from that, I didn't make any modifications. I did what it said. Little, there's little sort of, what's it called? Is it pico edging? I was going to say trico edging, that's not right. <laughs> pico, a little pretty little edging. That's a nice detail on the sleeves. And um, I think I'm responding subconsciously to that, the Barbie zeitgeist or something like that with this, with this pink, because everyone's wearing pink. So I'm planning to go and see the Barbie movie with my eldest soon. And I think I might wear this. <laughs> I've got two really um, because apparently people are going all dressed in pink so yeah that is my yoga wrap top which I won't use for yoga I do love yoga but it, it's not for yoga it's it's for floating around with dresses on and not getting too hot and still having something on your shoulders and being fun in pink onto the whips I have how many whips have I got now not that many actually for me hold on I'll move these I haven't got that many whips. I'm going to do my most exciting whip first. Can you tell I'm very excited? I have, I'm so close, almost. Yes, almost. I'm so close to finishing my Elsk dress. And this has been one of those. I'm thinking of entering that. There's a, a knit along that Inga's doing for knitting traditions. I think it's like Dream Knit Cal. I'm thinking of entering this into that because it is one of those dream knits. It's one of those projects that you put off and put off and think, that's going to take forever, but oh, I love it, but it's going to take forever. And it's, oh, how am I going to afford the wool? And do I even want to, oh, you know? And, and you think about it, but then you think at some point, you've just got to start it and do it because it just looks so fun. So that that is what the Elf's dress is to me. Before I show you my progress, I'm actually just going to show you on here. So this is the pattern, the Elsk dress. Ooh. Gudrun Johnson from her Shetland Trader 3 book. I love this book. I bought it to knit this pattern, but I do really, really like the Vare as well. I know that that's quite a popular pattern. I think it's on the cover, but that one, I would knit it like that with that bit plain because I can't deal with zigzags and pattern there for me. It's all about the pattern there, but I know some people have knitted it with the zigzags on the front cover there. It is beautiful. So I can see myself doing other patterns in this book easily. It's it's gorgeous. I love it. And here, oh, I've got everything so tangled. I'm not going to show you my bag because it's just embarrassing. This is wool everywhere. I've given up. I start off projects really, really organised. I don't know about you. And then by the end, I'm just... <laughs> balls of wool everywhere right this is my progress so far I'm going to have to stand up slowly to show you this Ta-da! Ooh, look so this I've done one sleeve you can tell this isn't blocked yet with the color work the, the color works the fun bit and I have done another sleeve I finished the color work and now I am on the ribbing the ribbing's pretty boring and annoying and takes me too long because I've done exactly every <laughs> for once I have done exactly as the pattern commands with this project I feel like it, it's really well written and I feel a bit like with with the Alistair Moore patterns I don't want to deviate and uh because I just feel like I don't know why I just wanted to do everything that she says because I do feel like this has been a, a new thing for me. I've never knitted a dress before and I feel like I've had my hand held by the pattern and I don't want to get a bit cocky and start doing my own thing. Because, and the only thing I would possibly change if I did this again would be to knit the sleeves flat. I know most people would say, well, some people would say, that's insane. You've got loads of colour work. Why wouldn't you knit in the round if you can? And the answer is, I don't mind knitting colour work flat. I don't mind purling colour work. I love a purl but I knit weirdly. I, I knit combination knitting, so my pearls are easy. And I find, although I do like the magic loop method much better than the little needles that are doing that, because I can't make that work. You know, I'm doing the magic loop, but I find it very like, eh, 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 and it, it breaks up my flow, <laughs> especially with a little row like this now that I'm doing the, the cuffs. And I feel like I'm, I'm almost knitting a row for every, two rows for every row because I'm having to mess about. And... I feel like it cramps me and I would rather just knit a big flat thing and do that and then seam because I like sewing. Having said that, there's, you know, I'm having a great time doing it. I've, the pattern's beautiful. I did find it hard and I don't know, again, this is probably to do with my, um, 
might be my knitting or my measurements but when I got I knitted it from the bottom up and I go into detail about this in the last like three episodes so I'll try not to, to go on too much it's from the bottom up you knit a hem then you, there's a clever way of joining the hem and folding it up and then you go up you do the color work this bit is blocked and it's so pretty and you knit 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 you divide at, under the arms for the front and the back and then you knit the shoulders together when you cast off you like do a thin little cast off to get the shoulders to join and then you pick up stitches around the armhole to knit the arms the only thing i found was that the number of stitches i needed to pick up for the armholes there would have been holes it would they were there were too few for the fabric that i had now that isn't necessarily the pattern's fault it may be that my row gauge is slightly off, although for the rest of it, it has been pretty spot on, but I haven't checked it for a bit. So what I did with both sleeves was I picked up too many. And I know that Alice Starmore says if you pick up, if you're picking up a neckline or picking up any, any, any stitches around an opening, you're better to pick up something like, is it 25% too many? You know, you can pick up extra ones and then decrease to where you need to be, like knit some together so that it evens out rather than have the holes. So <laughs> I did that on the left sleeve. I did that. But then I didn't realise because Gudrun Johnson, you know, like I say, follow the pattern exactly because she was um, wanting you to go instantly into short row shaping for the sleeve caps. So I didn't get time to go round knit things together and sort out the sleeve count I went straight into that and then I was having a bit of a I was waiting at a station for a train I was about three hours early so you know when you've like booked your specific train and you can't move it and it was even would have been 50 quid to move it so I just thought well I'm just gonna sit in a cafe and knit while I wait and <laughs> I was there with my coffee just going for like three hours just frowning at this because I was having to short row it and then sometimes knit two together at the end of the short rows and I got myself a little bit confused it worked fine it's fine it looks fine but I wished I'd just done as she said. However, I needed the other sleeve to look the same and I wasn't prepared to unpick anything because it did take a while. So for the next sleeve, I did, I did exactly the same. I picked up too many stitches, but then I allowed myself one round just to adjust to make sure everything was, you know, the right number of stitches were there. And then I started the short row shaping for the sleeve cap. So that's a tiny modification I've made and like I say, that could be my measurement counting or whatever it is I was up to. I've still got the cuff to do and then I'm doing the turtleneck version. This is lovely and soft. So I've got that to do and, and then I'll be done. And then I won't be able to wear it for ages. I won't be able to wear this till I think it'll be cold enough until October. I mean, touch wood, we don't want it to be cold too soon. But I will have it and, and be very proud of it. The yarn is Toft. Is it Toft UK? is toft and it's the thread weight and it's in chestnut and it as I said before it, it's very thin and at first you think this isn't this isn't fingering weight but it fluffs with with working it just starts fluffing up with blocking it blooms beautifully it's very very soft I don't know what wool it is it's just from a, a farm in uh, in the UK but I do recommend it I think it's usually used for toys and things like that it was a little bit pricey but but not ridiculously so I think for what you're getting and the contrast colours the pinks most of the pinks are ducky darlings and I don't know the names of the colours but I picked up some mini skeins at um oh what's it called what's that what's that plate what's it called oh my goodness it was a wool festival in Skipton last year and I've got tickets this year and the name of it's gone out of my head anyway I went to like a wool fair <laughs> And I bought, I went to the Ducky Darling store and I bought loads of colours for this. I had a blue, like an icy blue, but it, the contrast turned out when I had it all with the chestnut, the contrast wasn't big enough. So I swapped out the icy blue that I got originally got for, it's a Socks Yeah shade, because I had a bit of that left over. And my wild card in the colour work is this little pinky, yellowy, goldy. And that was a leftover scraps that I had from my So Faded project by Andrea Mowry and I used Life in the Long Grass and I've forgotten the name of the colourway but it's a beautiful pinky golden colour and I put that in just to see what it looked like and I just think 
it's variegated and I didn't know but I think it just adds a little something to it it's gorgeous and I'm really pleased that I added that in and that is a, got a silk in it as well so that is my Elsk dress I'm really really enjoying it it's very much one that I work on at home in front of the television I shouldn't really because of all the colour work and it could go wrong but um I'm watching Outlander at the moment. I absolutely love Outlander and the new series is on. So I'm, I'm watching and sometimes I have to pause and then look at what I'm doing and then go back and rewind because you can't miss anything and there's lots of stuff going on. Um, but I'm re-watching some of the old series as well and then I can concentrate on this because I've, I've already watched them. Um, so good. <laughs> so yeah, that's my Elsk. Next whip. Now, this isn't gonna look very different to the last time I showed it to you, but, but I have done more than it looks. Mm. Oh, <laughs> I took this on the bus the other day and there's, there's bus tickets and things in it. So this is the Rowena jumper. Was it Rowena pullover? I call it the Rowena jumper. It's Rowena by Fable Knitwear. And this is how far I have got. Is that coming out okay? I'm in the window, but I can't see the screen properly. I think you should be able to see that knitted in the round, bottom up, <laughs> haven't got very far. But the reason it looks like I've done nothing, I have actually done more is because the last time I had it knitted as medium, it looked tiny and then I was having a think about it. I think I'd gone up to about, about that far medium, the size medium. And I thought, oh, that looks so small. And I was gonna try it on. And then I was watching Knitting Traditions and Inga had knitted this for her grandmother. And I know she mentioned it had come out a lot smaller than she thought. And I think someone else in the comments said, oh, sometimes Fable Knitwear, the, the sizings, you know, can be a bit small. So I thought, no, I'm not even going to try it on. It'll just frighten me. I'm going to rip it out because I know I don't want it that tight anyway. And so I'm knitting the large size and I'm not normally a large, but there you go. My, my gauge is right, although I have had to go up uh, half. I think it was supposed to be four millimetres and I've gone up to 4.5. and My gauge is OK with those size needles. I'm knitting it with Mongolian cashmere, which is Badman or Badma. Hang on. I can show you. Where's my label? Oh, there's a lipstick in here too. Hold on. I went to sip and paint on Thursday and I think I took it on the bus for that. Yeah, Badma yarns. So I'll show you the picture there. Mongolian cashmere. I've never knitted in cashmere before. Um, I am really, really enjoying it. It's burgundy shade. It's very soft. I think if I'd got an undyed batch, it would be even softer, but I really, really like this colour. And it's going to be a beautiful fitted, warm sweater to wear. I think it's going to be a bit smart, you know, so I think it'd be nice and I can wear when I want to be a bit smart, maybe to work, maybe out in the evening. And it's so it's one by one rib and it's one by one rib for the body and then it's I think it's stock and stockinette stock and stitch for the sleeves and you knit round and round and round and round and I am going to knit round and round and round and round a lot longer than the pattern suggests because I think Inga knitted it a bit longer and said it still seemed a bit short and if it's going to stretch if it's going to be fitted it will ride up so and I always do this it's my bugbear I, I have a, I'm long-waisted and I always 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 think I can get away with things being shorter than they are and then I knit them and then I finish them and get excited and then wear them and I think oh, I need to knit them and I have to unpick things and re-knit I've done that so many times and I always say I won't do it again but I do however when I knit bottom up I don't normally have as much of a problem with that I think I think it must be when I try and fit things knitting them bottom down I think they just sit differently when they're on the needles and things like that. Whereas when you're knitting bottom up, bottom up, you just measure it and you say, is is this seam, you know, the underarm seam, is it long enough? You know, has it gone up far enough? And I think that might be a bit more of a reliable way of doing it. And I don't have that issue with with items knit bottom up. So fingers crossed. But I am still going to be knitting this probably at least 10 centimetres longer than the pattern says, maybe a little bit more, because I hate it when things are riding up when you don't want them to. And I've got a you know, with, with the size and dimensions of my body, I've got a chest measurement that's quite large compared to my waist. So actually, I don't want things pulling up. Um, there's a really good episode. It's uh, on Netflix and Chill with Jen and Bess. They talk a lot about fitting things over busts and things, which is really useful if you fancy listening to that. So that is whip 
number two. Wait, number three. Yes, it's the dreaded socks. I'm still working on these socks. I annoy myself about this project. So I've been rambling on about this for about a year. I'm knitting some socks for my dad. It's It's been a project. I knitted some, they were the wrong size. This is the second time I've tried. I had an elbow injury halfway through, stopped knitting for a bit. Took a long time to pick them up again because I'm a very selfish knitter. I, and, and it's not because I'm a selfish person, but I think for many years I didn't knit because I didn't know who to knit for, which sounds really, really, really stupid. But when I started watching Fruity Knitting and I saw Andrea knitting all these amazing things for her because she liked them and I thought, I could just knit stuff for me. And I don't know why it hadn't occurred to me before. I think I felt a bit guilty if I was spending all this time knitting something just for me. So I'm still sort of writing. You, sometimes you like swing one way, swing another way. I've swung the other way. I'm like very, very selfish. I, I knit my friend's jumpers sometimes. but um, And then when I couldn't knit at all with my injury, I was just like, when I knit again, I'm just going to knit stuff for me because I was <laughs> wanting loads of things. <laughs> And yeah, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm very grumpy about knitting these, not because I, I love my dad and I want him to have lovely socks, but it's the summer, he won't wear them for ages. And um, I just don't like this colour. This is what's, this is the thing as well. I'm looking at this colour, right? He loves it, he picked it. And it's not about what I like, but you know, when you're looking at it, you're like, ah. <laughs> it's copper, copper coin, I think. And it is Headshot Fibres. And I'm not criticising Headshot Fibres. I love loads of their colours. It's just this is one thing that wasn't, isn't my sort of thing. And I think that's contributing to me being generally grumpy, lazy. And I've got a knitter's block. That's a better way. To, I've just got a bit of knitter's block. This is the sock that I've already knitted. And I've showed this to you before. So if you've seen it before, but just to, just to refresh. This is the second sock. And if it was me watching somebody else, I would be going, I'll oh, just get on with it and knit it because I'm sick of hearing about it. <laughs> and I, I feel your pain. I'm sick of hearing me going about this. But I have got a remedy for it because I've decided that every day for half an hour, I'm going to work on this until it's done. Because my son is visiting my, my parents, his grandparents, in about a week and a half. And I'm going to go and pick him up the weekend after. And I want to have this finished by then and that'll be a doddle. I could just sit down and do this in a day, to be fair. But I thought if I do this for half an hour every day, it's not very taxing. It's an enjoyable pattern. I'm not criticising the pattern. And then it will get done. So the name of the pattern, it's from the book 52 Weeks of Socks. It's Nina Tanskanen. <laughs> Sorry about my pronunciation. And it's Nina Tan... Tan Scannon is the designer and it's the Unity socks. I don't know why I don't know that. I don't know why I'm still having to look that up, but there you go. And there's the picture. What a lot of groaning and moaning, but it's, it's a funny one because you can't, it's not that it's not intuitive, but you need to follow the pattern and know where you are. So that's another thing with me. When I'm knitting socks, I'd rather have them out and about and just knit them, pick them up at work, knit a few, you know, it's a few rounds and they get done really quickly. But this one, I've got to read the pattern. I've got to watch because you can see this lovely, lovely pattern it, the ribbing is just traveling across and, and it is really beautiful let me stretch it out you can see there it's lovely but you you can't just well I can't wing it some people might but I can't so that is how that is working I am just at the point now where I can turn or start knitting the heel it'll be fine I'll get them done and maybe next time I record I will have them both done and you will all breathe a sigh of relief you won't have to hear about them ever again <laughs> except for a try but I did them and I've already got my greedy little eyes on other socks that I want to knit for myself there's some Hohi Locatelli cozy cable socks that I'm dying to knit for me and I've got some self-striping yarn that I want to try for me but they'll I think cabling the cable socks are chunkier I'm probably more motivated because they're in a burgundy that I really love and the self strapping yarn is fun and it'll be a vanilla sock so I think I'll be more motivated then but we'll see and if I'm not then we'll know it's definitely because I've got like a sock syndrome or just I don't know I want to knit more socks and be better at them but I, I find them I don't get as excited about socks as I get excited about the garments so that is Whip number three. Oh, I also had to re-knit that completely from scratch because I think last time I knitted this much, so I won't even show you because it's pathetic. But um, 
I ripped that out because I've done the ribbing wrong because the, the ribbing you have two knits within the ribbing because that starts off the shape of it all traveling and I hadn't remembered that so that's them onto the swips I do swips soon to be whips I'm a project knitter and if I've got the yarn and if I've got the pattern and I just want to get started that is a swip it's not a dream knit which is another section that sometimes I probably have I might have to do actually yeah like dream knit section because everything's there um because if and I'm trying to make sure that I actually knit with the wool that I've got because sometimes I'm getting new stuff but I've already got stuff and I, I need to just knit the stuff that I've got because it's ridiculous I haven't got loads of storage and yeah I need to calm down so my soon to be whip and this this wasn't on my radar at all even when we when I broadcast it last time it's um or recorded last time I have since seen again I'm a big fruity knitting fan and there was Shirley Payden the designer Shirley Payden featured on the last episode I believe and I saw the aid address and I had a little swoon <laughs> that's so beautiful no idea if it's doable beautiful I've got the the pattern bought the pattern and I already had quite a lot of yarn and I had it already bought for a Kim Hargreaves pattern that I wanted to knit but I've lost the mojo to knit it. I had this this yarn and I thought oh I've got loads of that because it, with it being a dress again and what's wrong with me why am I knitting I'm suddenly decided to knit dresses I just uh, I like a challenge um yeah so I already had something like seven or eight balls of that and I thought well it won't take many more balls if it's still all on sale to actually get enough for this dress so I will have already put a picture of the Ada pattern up. It's stunning. And this is the yarn that I've got. This is Milburn Four Ply. Again, it's Eden Cottage Yarns. Same that this is knitted in. I really recommend them. I do really, really like that. I love their, all, all their range. It's just gorgeous. And this is a, a again, Blue Face Leicester, 85% Blue Face Leicester. 15% silk. It's 200 metres to 50 grams. And really, I mean, this is Milburn DK, so actually it's the same combination that, that this is. And it's a charcoal, and I just I just think this will be really, really, this dress will look really pretty and sophisticated in this. So it's not the same dye lot because I bought the last lot about a year ago, but it does look quite the same. And I'm laughing because like, some people will be like, no, you can't do this. But it's, it's a lacy dress. And I think if I alternate skeins and make sure I knit alternate rows or rounds, I don't even know how it's constructed yet because I haven't even read that far. Um, I, 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 can, I can mix them all in and make it work. That is the plan. So that is a soon to be whip. I don't know when I'm going to start that because I like to have one complicated knit on the go, one easy one and maybe one sock so that I'm you know, I can, I can, when I'm tired, I can just knit plain. And when I want to be sort of excited and interested, I can knit complicated. But I have another soon to be whip, another swip that is quite um, complicated as well. So I'm not sure when I'll knit that, but it's definitely going to happen at some point. The next swip should be something, I've got a load of beautiful pearl grey linen in the Lena Cat, what is it called? Katina? Katia? That's what I knitted my Moonset tea in the same um, one and I knitted my friend a cardigan and, and one of the, the shades with this pearl grey. I've got loads of that because I wanted to knit, well I still want to knit the Ula La tea, but now we are just about into August and I don't want to stress myself out thinking I've got to finish everything before the winter. So I'm, I'm toying with the idea, either I knit a really quick whip with it or I just leave it until next year and I'm not totally decided. So that is a, I don't even know if that's a swip. Is it a swip? Soon to be whip? It's a possible. A whip? <laughs> no, that's, that's not a thing. Um, a possible whip. <laughs> so I don't know. That's something I'm thinking about that at the moment. And the other swip that I have is hold on I need to go and get the yarn 
I've misplaced the pattern, but I know it's in my bookcase somewhere. It's in a pom-pom issue and it is the Nightingale sweater by Nora Gone. I think that's how you pronounce her name. And I have got, I've had this for ages. This has been in my little, I have my beady little eyes on knitting this for ages. I've just managed to untangle this by getting it out, but it's, it is going to be knitted in Cascade. I think it's this shade. Cascade 220 Heathers. So it's an Aran weight. It's a gorgeous teal colour. And that is what I'm going to be knitting that in. And I've wanted to start this for ages and I'm so excited. So I do think that that's going to be happening soon because by the time I get that finished, we will, we will be into autumn. Probably not be cold enough to wear it, but we will be into autumn. So that is another swip. And, and I'm not sure which one of these I'm going to start first, by the way, because I've still got other things to finish as well. But the last swip I have is the, I've seen the Romance Cardigan Design by Trico Design. I'll put a picture up. And I got a lot of this. We had a, a like a charity wool sale at the knitting group that I've joined in Langley Park in Durham. And somebody gave us, that's just my child coughing. A nasty cough, but he's got hay fever. Um, there's a, so the, a lady was having a clear out. I, I think she might have passed away actually. And there was a lot of her, her wool was there and we were going through it and we could take, we wanted to donate to charity. So quite a lot of money was raised, which was really nice. And I got about 10 balls of this. Now I don't know what it is. There's no label, all the labeled stuff, I think they've gone. It looks like a four ply and it feels like wool. It's woolly. I think it's wool. Oh, I don't know, like, hmm. I think I'll know when I knit up with it if it's wool. I think I'll be able to tell. I think it's wool, or at least it's got at least 25% wool in, I would say. And I am gonna pair it with this Cumulus. I love Cumulus, I've used it loads. It's a really, really soft uh, baby alpaca and silk combo. It's like an alternative to mohair, there's no scratchiness to it. And I am going to pair it, pair these together and have a black fluffy cardigan. This is because I need a black cardigan and I do like the Trico cardigan design. I would rather not knit in black if I could avoid it. And I also have a black hoodie on the back burner for my eldest, which I need to finish. That's gonna, but I'm leaving that till it does get cold because it's very thick, fluffy, sort of um, brushed, brushed fleece alpaca and it's gonna be too hot to knit with at the moment. Um, but yeah, I'm knitting this because I want to have a black cardigan and I really like that finished simp simplicity of the design. I think I'll wear it a lot, but I'm, I'm not as excited about it as you can tell as my sort of more complicated ones. But that is something that I do. I think I should cast that on sooner rather than later while we've got more daylight because it'll be tricky to knit in the winter. Well, I have all my craft lamps on, but you know, it's supposed to be better to knit with black in the summer, isn't it? So that is another swip. So many plans, so so many things to knit in so little time. Dream knits, I think I will have a dream knits one. Um, I've spotted the Carol Bralette by Elizabeth Margaret, and I am planning to go to, is it Yarndale? That's the name of the festival that I'm going to in Skipton in September. And I'm going to have a look and um, find a really beautiful, bright, crazy, um, hand painted or whatever it is, skein of yarn. And I'm going to knit this bralette. It's supposed to be knitted very sort of closely, I think in fingering weight. And it's supposed to be for any shape, any size. And I just really think that would be a really fun thing to knit and be able to, I could probably wear it as a bit of a crop top under a shirt or something like that. So that is, that is, a, that is my little dream knit. I would say I've got many other dreams, but we don't have time. <laughs> I could go on for hours. Um, but yeah, that's that's uh, my dream knit for this episode. So I haven't had my tea, and now it's been cold. I'm drinking. Um, it's my pucker tea. I love my pucker teas. I'm not sponsored by anyone, by the way. I just I just like things. This is um, it's called Radiance, but it's peppermint, fennel, and nettle. So I'm now it's cold. Oh, never mind, it's quite nice. I love that. 
yeah, um, as you can kind of, sort of move on to sort of updates and, and vague sort of life things, my thumb, which was, I, I told you it was like a bit of a horror film, it's, it's, it's just black now, I uh, shut my thumb in my car door, that's a sad little tale that I tell in the previous episode, um, but I can knit so I don't really care, and it, I, I'm getting some feeling back, I can use it for some things now, I think I probably broke it, but um, it's still a bit, oof. but uh, yeah, that'll that's all sort of coming out in the wash. I think the worse it looks, the better it feels with the thumb. And we went to Lanzarote and we had a really good time. And as, as, as you've seen, I knitted my yoga wrap top and uh, I did some extreme knitting with that yoga wrap top. So we had a camel ride and uh, I got my friend, I went with my friend and her son and, and my two children and myself. We, we, we've been on holiday loads uh, together quite a lot before. Um, I left poor James uh, at home with Charlie to look after Charlie, but my partner doesn't like um, holidays where you lie by the pool and drink cocktails. That's not his sort of holiday. So I thought, well, we'll go and have a, a kid's, um, yeah, sort of female fun holiday. Anyway, I got Claire to film me on the on the camel knitting. So I thought this is a good extreme knitting moment. And uh, she thought it was hilarious. That was it. And it was really, it was really good. And just, yeah, lots of lying by the pool and, and knitting and dreaming of the pink thing. And I, th I think I pretty much had it finished before I, by the time I came home. I think I was knitting the last sleeve on the plane on the way home. Uh, I took my wooden needles on the plane. That got through fine. And yeah, we just, we just had a really good time. I might put some footage at the end. Yeah, I, th I think that's about it. Um, things are a bit crazy at work, so I'm just using my knitting as a sort of self-care strategy. Sort of, you know, instead of rocking in the corner, I, <laughs> I knit desperately and uh, it works for me. It keeps me right. It keeps me just about sane. I've got a weekend coming up in the Lake District. That should be really nice. We're going to climb Scaffold Pike and I've got a visit to my parents planned and we've got some parties to go to. So there, there, there's lots of nice things going on as well. Can I just say thank you everybody for watching and thank you for those of you that watch and then comment and like and, and um, for all your lovely comments as well. I do read them all and I really appreciate them. Um, if uh, if you want to let me know what you're knitting on and uh, you know whether you think there's time to to knit a summer top if you're in the northeast of England on the 30th of July it is today so if you think that that's doable and I've got time please feel free to comment and try and urge me on and if you could let me know if you've got any really good ideas for any um, summer tops that you're knitting on that are, that are in um, that I could use in a, in a, with a fingering weight or thread weight linen again please comment and let me know and yeah thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time oh yes and don't forget to like and subscribe because that's uh, that's lovely if you do that. <laughs> I think it's just what YouTube likes and then, then, yeah. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.